Hello, hello, hello. And we are back for part two of the Glowing in Tech podcast, sponsored by Makers. Last week, we spoke to Michaela about her journey coming from an arts background into becoming a software engineer, starting in front end, going full stack, and also becoming a teacher, a technical teacher. So this week, I want to talk to you about your career challenge. What's something that you've faced that you've had to overcome? Yep. Uh, so one of the challenges that I found, as I said before, I was quite surprised at like um, how it was going to be like once you started the role. Because I think there's a lot of talk about like how to get into tech, right? Uh, but I didn't find a lot on what actually happens once you're in. So like, yeah. how do you actually ask for support and how do you continue to grow? Because mm. you're like, yeah, people will teach you like how to, I don't know, use this thing and then deploy and then... It's then, not all syntax. The role is not just writing code, exactly. right? Exactly. Exactly. It's it's not that. And and also there's just different parts of the platform that you that you might want to learn, right? And it's and it's not easy to like continuously learn and you can't just do that on your own. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need a mentor and stuff like that. So I I struggled a bit at the beginning having that continuous support and that's actually one of the reasons I did I did leave my my first role. Mm -hmm. Um and I yeah, I, you know, I've been honest about it when I did do my interviews right after my first role. I said, yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not really getting the support. So I would like to have more. Yeah. Um, and when I'm, I'm still having this uh, slight challenge as well in, in mentoring. So getting a bit more, I guess, a formal way of mentoring. Because mm -hmm. um, I think I think what happens sometimes is people think, oh, yeah, you know, you've done a lot of accessibility work or like oh you've done this bit of project and you know you're good like you can figure out the rest yeah. by yourself but actually no there are so like our platform is huge isn't it yeah like, there's a lot to it there's a lot to it there is a lot there's a lot like even just just the front end as it is like yes there are different parts of the platform and you look at it and you're like i actually have no clue somebody gave me a ticket on that i do not know how to do it mm. Um, so I, what I, what I want is a bit more like a hands-on mentoring, um, I guess, uh, structure, culture, yeah. something, but something where we can keep each other accountable, like weekly, Hey, you're going to check on me so that I'm actually all good. Like, and I'm not, you know, breaking into issues just mm -hmm. every minute mm -hmm. working on this ticket. Um, but where I think we're, we're, we're in the process of fixing it. We're at, fixing it. We're in the process of, um, at building it. Building it, yeah, that's yeah. it. Building, building a mentoring culture, like a bit, but a bit, getting it a bit more formal. Yeah, you know, like, especially on the front end. Exactly. So now we've got like weekly kind of office hours that we use. Mm -hmm. Um, that's somewhere that you know folks could come in, and it doesn't have you don't have to be like a junior for it. Like you could be mid level, you could be senior, and we can just either do it. Uh, we could all swarm on it, or somebody could say, "Oh, I actually might know what the problem is here," and they'll guide you to like solve that problem. Or if you have a question about that specific side yeah. of the platform, you know, you can you can ask that question and then get a bit more insight on it. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's a really important thing that you've raised. And it's great that you're making the steps like you're in, kind of like encouraging a culture change so that it is more formalized, not just for you, but for other people on the team. But like, how did you get to that point where because it could be easy for somebody else who's experiencing those problems to be like, oh, it's my fault that I'm not learning fast enough mm -hmm. or it's an issue that's related to me. So like, how did you, I guess, come to the conclusion that it, there are ways that you could be better supported and then how did you communicate those needs? Uh, yeah, first, so first removing uh, the blame from me. I, I think you've definitely had this conversation with imposter syndrome having mm -hmm. you on this, on mm -hmm. this podcast last mm -hmm. in the last season. Uh, I think you definitely need to first just eliminate that and and really just think about coding and general coding practices. You write the code and you need to leave it in a place where it's easier for the next person to read. And sometimes that's not the case. That's it, and it's fine. And but if it is, that means that you need to be able to, if you understand it, even if you haven't written it, if you understand it, I think you need to be able to to explain that. So that's that's where I was coming from. And I was like, oh, we've got a way of doing things. So, and some of them is not just obviously just the code. Sometimes it's just ways of doing things like you know, testing. I don't know. We test X, but we don't test Y, right? How am I meant to know whether we test X or not Y? Mm. We need to talk about that. And that that maybe comes down to like either documentation or we, we just 
you know, I don't know, maybe if I was actually pairing on you with this, you would have mentioned, oh, yeah. by the way, we test this, but we don't test that. You know, so yeah. things like this, you yeah. just you miss out. Uh, second part what was, was second um, part? how did you communicate those needs? Uh, yeah. So uh, those needs, I I first I started off uh, by bringing it up to my engineer manager, which mm. uh, is really, really great to have an engineer manager. If people don't know what an engineer manager is, they're meant to be um, there to kind of mentor you and guide, I guess. Huh, I don't know how to actually put it together. Well, yeah, like progress you, progression. Like, give you feedback sponsor you as well well not necessarily but it's kind of it's kind of like more like career coaching and yeah. i think in our case they're not necessarily technically trained in the same way that we are so yes, like uh, yeah different different training but they are they do have engineering experience yeah which yeah. is really great so that you know we can actually talk to them about it uh but yeah because i think because of that difference where they they probably had like a formal training and and we didn't uh it can be quite challenging to, to sometimes say like no this is why I'm having the issue and you probably don't understand why but you know you try your best to explain it so mm -hmm. I brought it up there and then I actually brought it up just to the whole of engineering team I was like listen I'm struggling like mm -hmm. I just and it's not I'm struggling on a ticket I also just found myself like oh I learned I learned I learned and then I kind of just like stopped learning mm -hmm. and I was like oh I don't actually want to be stuck on one part of the platform it like, could be really easy to let that happen right you're comfortable in this place you could coast here for a long time oh right oh my gosh that's so true <laughs> that is so true so identifying it and then communicating it is like a big step that I think yeah maybe a lot of people might yeah. not know how to do or do yeah. yeah yeah and it was also cool to see like the fact that the back end has such good yes. office hours. Yes. Mm. So like obviously with your experience, you saw like how the front end was doing it. But then it was also seeing like the fact that back end had their own kind of office hours yeah. and like how helpful that was for you. Yes. And also saying that, okay, so this is something that we should be implementing on the front end as well. I think that that made the case, building that yeah. case so much easier. And the fact that like you had the head of engineering also back you up and say, Absolutely. this is something that he leads. Uh, that's yeah, really I mean, cool. so in the meeting, yeah. he was just saying that this is something that he leads. And like, when there was, oh, can I spill the tea? I'm not the resistance. Or no. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. I think it's totally normal. Yeah. So yeah, we, I can talk about it. Okay. Did you, did you want to? No, no, but it's like, <laughs> so, so it meant that like, because you've been backed up by the head of engineering who already rolled this out, it meant that when there was like some confusion or some clarification that some that people needed, um, he helped to answer that and to like, give a lot of context to how he does it and, and give why? us ideas. Yeah, why? And mm -hmm. then, yeah, it's cool that uh, at the time of recording, like we had our first one like yes. last week. Yes. And there's a rota, which is really cool. So yeah, that's that way more organized in the yeah. background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it just means that like we have different people leading the session. So mm. I made such an effort to go to that first session because you know it's like we yes. don't want to be <laughs> making a big deal about implementing and then no one turns up. Yeah. So it's just like, and it was cool to see People, people participating like there was at least three people that shared their screen yeah. and was all through the problem and it was helpful for me to see like problems that other people are facing and learning from like from that as well that's such an important thing like, so i think with pairing often it's like the junior asking the senior for help but it's like i want to see what the senior is doing outside of my task and i want to yeah. learn like how are you approaching this ticket and how are you solving your problem? Because if I, if they're only helping me with the like smaller tickets, I'm never going to get to see yes. what it looks like to get into a bigger, more complex thing. Yeah, exactly. So like, I like that the office hours gives that flexibility that like, it might not necessarily be you coming with a problem. Yes. It might be them sharing the problem that they yes. are solving. Oh, yeah. that is such a good point. I think it's definitely important that we do set like a specific time for it because mm -hmm. one of the worries I think a lot of people had was finding the time to actually show other members in the engineer like yeah other engineering team members um on how to do things or set time aside to actually pair with them um and go through the issues that they have and stuff and and i said i think we we definitely need to think about this and this needs to be a priority mm -hmm. if you do not have time for this then maybe i think we need to take the load off from somewhere else mm -hmm. I, I think this should definitely stay like everybody in the engineering team should be able to keep going and keep learning and mm -hmm. keep progressing because mm -hmm. otherwise we're going to be blocking some progression no yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. and it's like i love the fact that you're contributing to the culture because it creates like, like you know how we spoke about like culture isn't static like as new yes. people join like the culture shifts but like it's just not it's like focusing more on culture adding rather than culture fit. Mm. So it's great that you're almost creating more of a learning culture and facilitating that in a way that benefits not just junior developers, but also mm. 
the mid levels, the seniors. Exactly. So it's part of a it's learning. part of a senior's job description exactly. to be a mentor, and, and that's the tea. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> where was Jesse in the meeting? <laughs> What was she? <laughs> was she what in it? She's not a front end babe. I thought you're full you can babe. Uh, you can uh, isn't it? Uh, what happened to that? All right, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, you're getting caught out. It's a good opportunity, I think, for people who are maybe going into, I think, senior to actually mm. have this opportunity to mentor folks. Whether that's you know somebody at their the same level or somebody who might be a bit more junior, they get to actually teach as well. Not teach, I guess. Get to mentor. Give yes give you know give that time practice and then that way they're actually building to be more again a better senior which is which i think is really good it's something i think you should um you should have early on and this is why i did teach actually i said i definitely want to be a good mentor and when i am a senior i i want to keep this culture of showing you know showing the whole team on how to do things sharing sharing that yeah, knowledge. yeah sharing that's what knowledge. i was going to say is like as a senior engineer you should be looking for how you're fulfilling that role and you should be looking at what how much you're contributing to the other people's growth mm-hmm. and learning and i think just for additional context like since you've both joined our engineering team is like triples yes mm-hmm. we've split into loads of teams and like you are actually kind of like you both hold a lot of domain knowledge that a lot of the newer but senior engineers don't have so Mm -hmm. it's like it doesn't have to be a one direction kind of helping thing like the fact that you're pairing with a senior engineer who's helping you on your task yes you're introducing them to a new part of the code base like it's not it's not all taking like they are learning from you too and I think that's a really important dynamic to establish when you're thinking about pairing with juniors because it it can also sometimes be like oh but it's going to take away from my growth I might not be able to get my tasks done, but that's not how you should approach it. No, oh, Jesse, that oh, that's balls. <laughs> that yeah, is that balls. Is. <laughs> I love that. And also, like, even with the sessions, oops, sorry, even with the sessions, we're still able to chime in and yes, say, like, yes. oh, you're, you, you're missing this part, and that's why this isn't working. Mm. Like, Mr. Robbins was saying some really, I was like, he knows this. <laughs> 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 Mr. Robbins, you're getting the shout out today. I hope you're listening. Um, so yeah, so and that's really cool as well because we're all seeing the screen and sometimes like, oh, why is this part not working? And sometimes a person that's leading the session doesn't necessarily know. Mm, so it's yeah. cool to, to get the opportunity to also say, oh, like it could be this or like try out this, for example. So yeah, it benefits it benefits everyone. Definitely, definitely. I agree. Awesome. And Amber, I think it's your section. It is my section. It is What's the Tech Tea? <laughs> Makala will be sharing something controversial um, from the tech industry. And what is that today? Uh, <laughs> I, I struggled with this. I, I think as you both know, I have quite a lot of strong opinions about some things. We love your opinions. Um, <laughs> Thanks for the support. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think the tech tea is, I think, interview processes um, to graduate programs um, and entry levels. Um, I just, I feel like there needs to be just a bit more transparency. And that's, you know, it's, it's I think it's definitely lacking in, for, you know, how the interview process is going to go. Like how, firstly... I, I mean, it's, there's just so many different things. Um, I think being transparent about the salary that is it is going to be mm-hmm. um, definitely need to be better. But that doesn't that does that's not limited to just graduate programs, right? Um, and also, yeah, I think transparency about about um, the technical challenges that they are going to be having. Uh, mm. so a lot of the times I have seen graduate programs and they say, yeah, you know, we do welcome uh, people who don't have um, computer science mm-hmm. backgrounds. And then they'll ask me to lead code for 30 minutes. And that's four questions in 30 minutes. Yeah, that's not fair. It can be intense. Yeah. Like that is a very intense. Yeah. That or, is yeah. not okay. Um, and I and I feel like yeah, we, could, we could totally do better by being a bit more transparent about it. And I think if 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 we do want people to join and they are not from computer science backgrounds, I think maybe we need to think about how your process is definitely um, how your process. Uh, I guess how your process reflects that. You know, mm-hmm. what are you actually mm-hmm. asking for people? Because I think if you do project based, which is for me that works well because yeah. i I've, I've always worked on projects and it's a great time for me to show i can communicate i can present something mm-hmm. um i've thought about let's say um problems that might come up in yeah. the future 
Um, and I can also demonstrate, oh, quick wins that I can implement in a product, right? Mm -hmm. It's just really, really good. Um, but I think if you just have like leak code, you're like, okay, you specifically want specific people. Yeah, and is that reflect? It's not reflective of what your day to day is going to be like. You're not going to be sat at home exactly. answering leak code questions if you're doing a project. If you're joining a product based company, it's going to be like sure there are points where it's, yes. it's it's important to understand the fundamentals. But like having worked with seniors mm -hmm. and understanding. Like I do a lot, we're gonna be starting to do a lot of like data transformation stuff. And that is where the data structures and algorithm stuff is really important. They're having to go back and refresh on that yes. stuff. Yes. They don't know that yeah. from the go. Like yeah. it's, they, they may have learned it at university however many years ago, but like I should be able to learn on the job and that should be okay. Yes. So I, I, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. So I'd love to hear your opinion on this. So do you think that there should, so for example, for graduate software engineering kind of like um, scheme, mm -hmm. do you think that there should be two separate interview processes, one for computer science students and one for non-computer science backgrounds? No, I, I think it should just be one. I think within a project, you can definitely show a lot of the skills that you have. Like, sorry, I say project just as an example. It doesn't have to be that. It could mm -hmm. be, it could, there are many different ways, right? You can do a pairing, debugging. Mm. You can do debug and bring it. Or you can do make a project and come back and we'd like to see what you come up with. There you can showcase a breadth of skills and that can be different. So I'll do a certain thing, you'll do a different thing, but you still get to showcase something and you can still, you know, put that against the criteria that you that you want, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it could just be the same. And not, not to mention there is accessibility issues within t saying, hey, you've got 30 minutes to do this. I will tell you now, I have a lot of anxiety, 30 minutes. Yeah, I am. Very I am just sitting there panicking, yeah. and I'm sure there's other people that just it just doesn't fit their access needs. Yes, and especially like sometimes, sorry, the IDU that they give. Yeah, what is that about? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is uncodable. Like, I just can't. Exactly. Like, when we we had an opportunity to do <laughs> to do um, uh, the coding yeah. test, yes. and it was on what was it on? It was it was it wasn't on like. VS Code or it's even a web based one, isn't it? it? No, it was something like Higher View or something oh. like that. I don't remember what it was, but it was really hard to use in general. Yeah. So that yeah. using the ID to try and solve the problem, but the problem being so unbearably hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. really and again, using a web based ID that's inaccessible, that's not reflective of your day to day. You won't be using yep. that in that no, role. Literally. And there's like really good web based IDEs, like, um, Code sandbox. Yeah. I love me a cheeky code sandbox. Let me do that right now. Back in the day when I was Python, REPL.IT. Yes. Chef's kiss. <laughs> but like <laughs> this whole higher view, like the those ones are not doing what they need. So mm -mm. I'm not even sorry. But like it's just not doing. Yeah, what it needs to no, do. it's scary because it's all of that pressure, all of that difference, and it's all adding to that anxiety and that dread that's gonna mean you're not gonna be able to perform as you normally would. Yeah. It's just a strange way to measure people, I think. Yeah, like at work, you will never see me fix a code in 30 minutes. Like, no. are you, that's just no. not gonna happen. Mm. There's, it only happens a few times and that's only because I have actually come across that problem before. Mm. But mm. it's not gonna be a data structures and algorithms question. Yeah. Like that is yeah. impossible. Um, so yeah, I find that, find that a bit not, not okay. <laughs> yeah. And there's a great resource out there that shows all the companies um, for their software engineering interviews that don't use data structures and algorithms yes. and whiteboard. What, okay, can we talk about the whiteboarding thing? I just think that that was a pre, I think, I feel like that was like a pre COVID thing where there was, was like it? a whiteboard interview and you basically had to write out your code. Oh, a whiteboard. Oh, whiteboard. Yeah, I, I think that challenge, but well, I think most of the people that, that do that do that challenge, uh, they're not really looking for like syntax thing, but they just want to see how you think. Mm. I have not done it personally, but I don't know whether if I would do really well because you're under time pressure. People are watching you. And you're in a room. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I would love... The thing is, I didn't... Uh, oh, no, I have actually. Uh -huh. um, before COVID to quite oh, hit, no. actually done like um, a software engineering graduate interview process mm. in person. But the hybrid thing, wow. Wow, I would love to talk like about the difference between like doing that and like coding live in front of a person in an interview versus coding live in front of a person, but virtually. Yeah. <laughs> like the difference between like <laughs> virtual interviews versus in person, because that must be very, very real. Yeah, it must it must be very different. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I definitely had my notes. I just, 
I'm incapable. I cannot remember all these things. And I'm not going to remember them in the job. I yeah. literally have a tab, one screen dedicated to Googling, oh the yeah. other screen for coding, of, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. There was one graduate scheme that actually encouraged, so they had two separate um like streams oh. like one for for computer science students and one for like non-technical like because they were working closely with, with code first girls at the time and I they see. wanted to get the people that did the code first girls course mm -hmm. onto the software engineering graduate scheme which was kind of nice because it okay. just meant that like we weren't coding for someone they, there was like kind of like a white not a whiteboard but it was like paper and they yeah. asked like kind of like not like a systems design, but it was a bit like a low level systems design kind of question. Like how would you approach building? Yeah, code? yeah, yeah. Like how would you approach like all these things That's and asking cool. you like questions that like questions that you would know from the course, like yeah. what's an API yeah. how and things like that, just to demonstrate your technical understanding because they're it comes with the idea that you'll be learning on the job. So like mm -hmm. as long as you have the fundamentals and you've at least prepared then yeah. like okay. we're willing to so what, what i want to know then is was the software engineering street or the computer science stream were they tested on their soft skills their previous work experience <laughs> the skills i don't they, know i just know that i you know because it's not I like asked. for like it's not like for like so i think it's different it's different it's difficult wait what's different i just mean like if you're having the separate streams a computer science and yeah. a, and a mm -hmm. um, non-technical background and you're having a slightly different process that means that there's a lower bar for entry. Mm. Is that what you're saying in terms I'm of- I'm not sure. Uh, the thing is like, I wish I asked more about it mm. because well, you know, okay, so it's an assessment day. You know, people are a bit on edge with spilling mm. the tea. Mm. And so it's like, I was asking the, the girl that was doing the software engineering stream, but you know when it's just like, she, she could inadvertently have given me an upper hand if I knew the questions oh, that she was I being see, asked. I yeah. See. So it wasn't like an open, yeah. like, yeah. I don't know what they were being tested on. Yeah. But I would have loved to I just know. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Mm. I just wondered, maybe they just probably framed a question where it just gave them a bit more room to, yeah, I guess, showcase their soft skills, core skills, core mm -hmm. skills. Core skills. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, core skills and um, given the room to actually also, you know, showcase their, their technical understanding. Because mm. I, I think that that is great. And that that is why I love like project based or yeah. uh, debugging debugging challenges yeah yeah because it, it's it's different to what you guys had to do for cybersafe which was you had a project brief yes. you went home and did that which again can also provide some inaccessible things because you're being asked to in your own unpaid time to do it to yes. do it yeah to, um and it takes like time it takes yeah. time yeah yeah, yeah. And, and then that, you come and bring that back to to the engineering team and they ask you questions and it's a bit of a back and forth right and i think that can be nicer because you've you're doing it without the eyes on you at the time and you're also getting the opportunity to explain your thinking behind mm -hmm. things after you've had time to think about it. So, but yeah, then the issue, you've just had to spend a couple of hours out of your evening to build this thing. Mm. Um, yeah, so what are your thoughts about that? I think that it's good that companies are at least making efforts yes. though mm -hmm. and having these kind of conversations to build like more inclusive, like um, job practices, not mm -hmm. job, job, oh, job interview, interview processes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, what are your thoughts? I think, it it does pose a bit of an accessibility issue and here when i talk about accessibility i mean like uh like time accessibility because mm -hmm. i i think some often this is forgotten about but people have like care duties sometimes yeah, yeah. and that depends whether it's a parent family member or they have kids um it just depends and sometimes that's not considered and i <laughs> And I think this also goes into like boot camp sometimes not considering this. So I, I also want to flag that that's I think part of the tech tea as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think with tech home take home tasks, yes, that is also not considered. Uh, but I think, you know, companies could do better by giving like a shorter, shorter criteria, I guess. And if people can have time, then they can explore it. But I think it's also really good to give people time to talk about their problem, mm -hmm. the, the problems that they try to solve in, in, in that brief. Right. Yeah. So like, obviously, I did not cover everything in the in the brief like because yeah we only yeah. have like and you're not expected to yeah like, I, exactly. i've i've been on the other side where i'm interviewing people who are bringing their take-home yes. tests and then they get to go i didn't have time to finish this bit but this is what yeah. i would have done and like that's also a really good way to see how people prioritize that short amount of time right Ooh, yeah that is such a good point yeah. Prioritize, yeah the prioritization yeah that's really cool and i think we can do better by just making sure that we, we definitely have that question in yeah. there mm -hmm. um so that we give people time to say oh what, what did you think about this or like oh if you had time how would you do this mm -hmm. these are like small fixes but if you miss them out 
damn, you have not seen, you know, yeah. what the candidate could have possibly yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your thought on on boot camps and how much time they presume a person has? Um, yeah, so I, I've just seen quite a few boot camps or heard about a couple of few a couple of boot camps um where uh let's say they'll be like oh you know you have class monday and thursday Mm -hmm. uh but then on tuesday night there might be like a mandatory thing happening um Mm -hmm. and then uh, i don't know and then a bunch of stuff um like obviously there's like homework and all of that right and i think with that you you do you do i think as an applicant you will know about the homework and stuff right Mm -hmm. but the external stuff I think it would be nice, I think, if we were a bit more transparent on that. And also, uh, a lot of the times, of course, these are linked with jobs that you would get at the end of it. Yes. And these jobs, they have not really been clear that the application process will probably take six weeks. You'll have to build X project, mm-hmm. learn data mm-hmm. structures and algorithms or whatever, or give you a booklet to, to learn. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That is not accessible. And I... I think we could definitely do better by first being transparent to students like, hey, this is actually what the time is going to look like. This is the job that we're going to put you through for at the end of this boot camp. And the interview process is going to be like this. The pay is going to be like this as yeah. well. Yeah. Because I think people need to know, because again, in this, in this, I don't know, six weeks boot camp, they're probably not working or they're working like mad and they're not doing that bar shift that's happening in the evening or whatever they're doing, mm-hmm. or they need to pay for care for their children their i don't know family members whatever it is and i think that's often forgotten about mm-hmm. um yeah no definitely and there's some great practical tips so boot camps you heard her <laughs> implement these changes <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much Rakaila. it's been a pleasure to have you today where can people keep up with you if they want to stay in touch uh yeah i'm on twitter so you can find me at Mikaela gast um that's g-a-s-t <laughs> and we will put this in the show notes as well and all the resources you mentioned thank you so much for coming on it's been a pleasure thank and also you thank you so much for listening yeah so if you're on spotify or any other podcasting apps please make sure to rate us especially if you enjoyed this episode leave us a review where you are listening and also if you're on youtube and you're viewing us in 4k give us a like and a comment and a subscribe Available on all major podcast platforms.